Hey guys, I don't know if you can hear me uh, because the music's pretty loud. Um, so I'm using a grid <laughs> somewhat. Um, every time I do this, I realize why a grid is not a panacea. Is not. It just gets you close, especially when you're working. On a rough canvas. So uh, it'll get me close enough, and then I'll have to use other methods. Okay, <laughs> at this point, I usually need to uh, start painting just, just to cover up my messes. So let's get a little bit smaller brushes and start mixing up some very approximate flesh tones. Now, I do like my approach to painting flesh tones in that I, I build up layers of color to achieve my eventual. As soon as I do this, of course, then I start losing the grid, so I want to be a little bit accurate in where I put these marks. I don't know if you, again, I don't know if you can hear me, and I don't know if you can see this, but uh, I actually have two colors of grid there on my canvas, and I have two colored grid here on my, on my phone. I use a tool called Artist Grid Tool to make those grids, and it's a trick, it, it, you have to, you have to rig the app to make it do two different colors on the same photo. But you can figure it out if you want to do it. I figured it out. You have to do one grid, then turn it off, and come back and do another grid on top of it. That's how that works. In case anybody can hear me, in case you want to know. <laughs> So 
what it's worth uh, when I'm painting, um, underpaintings even like this. Yes, I do, I'm, I do try to remember my classic anatomy studies. You know, what, what bones, what muscles are where. Just the classic book learning that all good artists have done. In other words, I'm not just painting blobs, you know, mindlessly following the, the grid or my sketch, or whatever. Especially like on that arm. I actually have three colors on the grid. Uh, two, the grid is two colors, red and blue. And then I have diagonal lines and other miscellaneous lines that are white. That's why I was using a white pencil for a second there to uh, help me get some of these big shapes in place. Katie is a tiny, tiny little thing. I'm not good at women's sizes, but you know, she's size one-ish, or size zero-ish, I don't know which. She's, <laughs> she, she's one of those brides where I will not, I will not, you know, exaggerate her thinness in the least. She needs no thinizing. Oof. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna get some um, dark colors. Or her hair in particular. A little bit his hair. Here's, this is the, uh, the, the scary part, awful part of painting live uh, at weddings is... Um, All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope everybody's oh. still enjoying dinner. Non we get ready to do the next toast, so you guys, I need...
Hey gang, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Um, I'll, I'll turn myself up for just a second between songs. Uh, so this is not part of the grid process, as you can see, but I'm going to just keep this broadcast going. Um, making some drawing changes. I was tempted to go straight to uh, um, a straight to oils a minute ago, but then I saw too, too many drawing issues and so on. So uh, that means at least a couple more layers of acrylic because I always end the acrylic stage with white. So right now I'm doing purple outlines. The reason I'm doing purple is simply because in the, in the world of uh, transparent color, purple is the darkest color. That's also, it's not, I'm not trying to represent a, uh, a realistic or local color by any means. I'm not thinking like purple shadows, I'm just thinking dark. Anyway, uh, I was saying earlier, this is the, the, the worst part of, of uh, painting in front of people live is that most of the people here, if, if they're looking at my, if they, especially if they come up and look at it up close, they think that, they're going to think that, um, that I'm done. <laughs> ah! <laughs> they're going to think that's the way it's going to look. They say. <laughs> I can tell by their tone of voice they're saying, I hope this isn't your day job. Anyway. And I, I that's part of the reason why I really do like to finish, or at least almost finish, a painting um, at the reception so that people can say, see what it's actually going to look like. But I can only do what I can do. So. And this is going to be a, a short reception tonight, I understand. Making more drawing changes over here. that this railing, I do it wrong, I'm trying to do it, there's double bar at the top, and double bar at the bottom, of this part. there's something on it, there we go, that looks like, has the feel I'm looking for, uh, okay, here's a, and again, I, I'm probably getting trouble with YouTube for that music in the background, but, I'm going to turn myself down a little bit and see if I can get rid of some of that background music. Can you still hear me? Um, so this is, there's several things in this painting that are what I call the repeated, highly repeated motif. A shape or a pattern that is repeated over and over and over again, right? One is in this railing, all those patterns, and the other is in the windows. So. Uh, my rule is anytime, anytime there's a highly re repetitious motif, using that barga term from maybe from music there, anytime there's a highly repeated motif, you have to be careful. Again, in my opinion, you have to be careful to render that motif in many different ways. Uh, so one of the things I'm doing right now in preparation for that is I am painting it messy, being careful not to be too careful, so that as I draw it again and again and again and again, it will take different parts of it will be rendered differently. Ah, that was that was clear as mud. I know. Sorry about that. That concept I'm trying to convey, but it'll have to do. <laughs> can't answer the question, why? Why? Why do you say, someone might say, why do you say, 
If there's a repeated motif, why does it have to be rendered many different ways? The answer is because the essence of good painting is making interesting marks, and the hardcore kernel of interestingness, what are interesting marks? The essence of interestingness is variety. So that's why um, you don't want um, to, to make the same mark over and over and over and over again. That's why, because it's boring. And of course, the viewers, the untrained viewer, won't, doesn't know why they don't aren't particularly moved by this or that painting. It's our job as artists to know why people may or may not be moved <laughs> by our painting. It's not their job to know. It's our job to move them without them knowing it. Okay, now you have to decide which of these characters here in the background is going to be Katie's. Uh, dad. He passed away about two months ago, three months ago now. And uh, so she wanted him in there. I think it might be this guy right here. She, he's the closest to the bride and groom. Okay, here's what I'm going to do before I leave. I'm, I'm liking the, the overall tone of the painting, so I don't want to do anything too drastic. Um, but I need to do a little bit. Back into my stash of equipment here. And fetching um, a bottle of acrylic medium. Sometimes when I want to do uh, a glaze in acrylics that is particularly thin, transparent. Um, I can't just keep adding water because the water will just run off the canvas and I end up with nothing. So I'm mixing, well that's actually still too much color. Whoops, I just colored my phone. Um, but I'll, I'll come back and wipe this off in just a minute with a paper towel. huge fan, as you can see, of coloring outside the lines. Can you see that? Okay, now, make the towels. Oh. <laughs> My roll of paper towels just to fly. <laughs> um, so, once again, making interesting marks with, with the rag as well. That's the difference between erasing and painting with a rag. When you paint with a rag, you're still intent, focused on making nice marks, interesting marks, lots of rag. Okay, so they're a little bit more blue. I like that. Now I'm gonna do the same exact thing, a little bit more, um, a little bit more yellow orange, a little bit more warm. I think we'll go with smaller brushes for that. But same idea. So I'm going to put some paint on my brushes. By the way, all this paint here in these little pots, it already has this down here. It already has medium mixed in with it, about 50-50. Medium and paint. Okay, so here's... Okay. And whoops, that's way too intense. I can't do that. Hey, while I'm at it, a little bit of red always looks good in the underpainting. <laughs> that's a rule you better not. That's a rule you better not believe. <laughs> a, red, a little bit of red doesn't always look good. 
Anyway, what I meant was a little bit of red often, very often looks good. <laughs> Every rule can be broken, so there's one. How oh, are good to put red in the other painting? Well, not always. But I did there, my intuition was correct. All right, I'm going to end this broadcast here. I'm going to start my next step and then fade out, take a little break. Uh, um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, white, hopefully my last layer of white highlights, white accents. Let me do a little bit of that. And then, um, I'll be in my oh, camera phone. Alright, so a little bit of white. I'll let you watch that for a minute. Let's start with the uh the dryer itself. Oh, that's too too white. Let's start with the dress. Oh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get letters from YouTube. If anybody knows, how can I get around that? Um, I've I've tried to get that question answered from YouTube and I haven't been able to find out. Is there any way to not get in trouble when other people are playing music? As you can see, maybe, when you paint uh, white into wet paint, then of course it picks up the wet that's underneath, the color that's underneath, of course, and, and uh, messes up. So years ago, I don't know, not that many, till two or three years ago, I used to always, my, my formula was wait uh, until that last color is dry before I do white. But then I discovered that you know, I really like this. I like soupy painting. Uh, it's part of my quest for, you know, painting messier. Is, uh, but what, what some of my students have tended to do is so they will then start painting their white acrylic and the white acrylic picks up color and then they just start painting, painting, painting colored, opaque color. And that, uh, that's not... That's not my formula, that's not, uh, that's not, sure it picks up the color, but you don't just keep rushing away, you know, in this case, like with a pale pastel, that would not be, in my opinion, a legal use of my technique. I want it to look like white paint. It's, it's dirty by the colors underneath. They're pretty colors, by the way, so it works very well. Okay, that's enough. I'm going to end this broadcast here and uh, come back in a little while when I switch.